Hey guys, Trevor here with eCommerce Paradise, and today I just want to discuss something uh, kind of specific within high ticket dropshipping um, how to handle warranty and uh, shipping damage requests. Because this kind of stuff happens, um, you know, somewhat regularly, and <laughs> you just kind of have to know how to deal with it. Um, for beginners, it's a little bit more of a process because you have to learn how to deal with it, but for the more advanced folks, what ends up happening is you end up creating um, SOPs which stands for standard operating procedures. And basically what that is just kind of a document and also some email templates, as well as some kind of maybe like phone call scripts, that kind of stuff that you can use to be able to easily communicate back and forth with customers. Um, and uh, the longer you're in business as well, the more you'll be able to know how to easily be able to work with your suppliers because a um, supplier is going to usually do the uh, warranty fulfillment themselves. Um, sometimes they want you to do it for them, like the communication, but usually they'll want you to have the customer go directly to the manufacturer and talk to them directly about it. Um, warranty basically, warranty issues basically means that um, a product is going to have an issue. It's not going to work properly. This is pretty common with electronics. Um, it also sometimes things that need to be assembled, I guess, um, you know, don't like align properly, things like that. So, uh, yeah, happens fairly often, but the main thing is that you just want to make sure that you're working with suppliers that have good customer service with their warranty department. So, um, sorry, my cat is playing with the toy behind me. That's really funny. I have lots of kitties. Um, so the warranty process is um, pretty easy and simple to um, go through usually. Um, it just depends on the supplier. Sometimes it's like back and forth email communication. Sometimes the supplier has a portal that they'll want the customer to go through. Sometimes they'll want you to go through it with the customer. It really just depends. Um, you know, I don't usually like to give customers information directly to suppliers because sometimes you deal with issues where like they kind of try to undercut you or tell the, I've had weird issues where the supplier told the customer to like send the product back and that they're going to sell it to them directly for a cheaper price and some crazy stuff. Um, if suppliers ever try to do anything weird, um, just really you should second guess your relationship with them and maybe have a talk with them and be like, yo, like, do you understand the, the value that we're bringing to you? And do you respect that? Because, you know, if they try to undercut you or like go directly to your customer um, and sell them something and whatever, um, it's probably not a supplier you want to work with. But anyways, uh, so definitely do the best thing you can, which is to just calm the customer down. That's the main thing. Usually customers are going to be pretty upset in the beginning and they just want their money back. Um, but you have to calm them down and just explain them that the warranty process, the way it works is that you have to file a warranty claim with the supplier and then you have to tell them what's wrong and you have to document it, usually pictures and video, um, things like that. The, and then they'll get back to the customer or you, it depends on you know how the communication works, but um, they will ask for more details or they're going to provide some kind of a um, you know, solution or some kind of a guide to fixing it. And then they wanna know like what is broken exactly, because maybe if it's a complex product that there might be multiple things that could be broken, so or not working properly, so they need to figure that out. So uh, once, you know, hopefully through that process, the customer and the supplier can figure out what it is that's broken that's not working properly, and then they can identify what part needs to be provided, and then they will, you know, send the part to the customer. If the part's out of stock, you gotta wait for that, which is unfortunate, but it's just what happens. Um, so the supplier will send the part to the customer, and then the customer is um, going to be uh, responsible for getting that part to be installed or, you know, whatever it is fixed, whatever kind of product it happens to be. And uh, that's just what it is. Uh, sometimes the um, customers will like want to go to retail physical storefronts because it's going to make it easier for the warranty process. If there's something wrong with the product, they can just bring it back to the store. But since you're online, you can't really provide that service for them. Um, some niches do have like third party businesses that do provide warranty services directly to customers' homes, which is really nice. Um, specifically, the mobility scooter niche has that. And also some appliances, like a lot of appliance niches have that. <clears throat> so uh, those kinds of things are really nice. And, um, you know, what are you going to do without them, right? Because the customer is going to have to find, either do it themselves, which is highly unlikely if it's a complex product, or they're going to have to find a, um, you know, a company like or like a freelancer or some sort of like handyman to fix it, whatever it happens to be and whatever the thing. And then they got to bear the cost and all that. And sometimes they're going to bear the cost and then send you the receipt and ask you to pay for it, that kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of back and forth when it comes to warranty issues. And you're just going to have to go through it with your customer and try to figure out the best solution, try to take care of them. And it really depends on the margin 
options, you know, it depends on how much the shipping costs and stuff like that. Sometimes customers will freak out and they, they don't even want to fix it. They just want to send it back, you know, and that's a huge pain in the butt. Um, it just, it happens. Unfortunately, it is what it is. It's just part of doing business. You can have to deal with it. Um, sometimes you're going to have customer remorse, uh, buyer's remorse, they call it. And they're, um, the best way to go about doing that is just to try to calm them down and just make sure that they know that you have their best best interests in mind, but you also have a business to run. And it would be very unprofitable if every customer returned their product and you had to bear the cost of shipping to send it back. So usually we have a very strong return policy that states if something's wrong with the product that they don't get to just automatically have it shipped back for free, but that they have to go through the warranty process. Um, which means there's going to be replacement parts sent out and they have to fix that and they are, are responsible for the cost of that. And it's usually baked into the website policies. Uh, but sometimes customers just aren't cool with it and they freak out and customers get emotional. It's just a part of the process. Either you're going to have to deal with it or your VA is going to have to deal with it. Or unfortunately, sometimes the supplier's warranty department has to deal with it. Um, another thing that's pretty common is shipping damage. So shipping damage occurs um, usually because suppliers don't package a product properly. Um, or it's just the, the shipping company just, you know, throws the boxes around. Um, you know, uh, I, you know, when I was selling uh, bicycles back in the day, what's really common with bicycles is that, you know, suppliers will try to package them in a UPS box that doesn't hit that threshold for um, dimensional weight. And what that means is that um, if a box is a certain dimensions, a certain size, that they'll actually charge the same amount of money that they would charge for a much heavier product, even if it's not that heavy. So a bicycle being like 40, 50 pounds, or 30, 40 pounds, whatever, but it's like a certain size, they'll charge for it as if it's like 80 or 100 pounds. It's called dimensional weight, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. And what they do to cut corners is they'll actually package it in a smaller package, like the, the thinner cardboard package. And uh, that unfortunately will cause shipping damage issues because if you know these heavy bicycles get thrown around, sometimes the frames will get bent up or the you know the wheels and, um, will end up being like the spokes will be bent or something like that. There was a lot of shipping damage issues because of that kind of stuff, and um, it was just it is what it is. Unfortunately, um, you know what I usually had to have customers do was take their product to a bike shop, like a local service or retailer that would actually. Um, you know, fix it for them or at least provide them some sort of like a diagnose uh, for the problem. And then they would go to the, the brand, the supplier, the manufacturer, us, and, and try to get the part. And then they'd have to pay for it. And then we'd have to like pay, uh, cover a part of it for them or cover it all or whatever, you know. Every supplier is different how they deal with things, um, you know. And if there's electronics involved, usually customers not going to be able to fix it. And sometimes there's not even a servicer that's going to be able to fix it. Um, the older industries usually do have service you know, companies that provide services of like fixing the products, especially electronics. So um, it's always better to get into an older industry with like those kinds of services available just for the customers, you know, um, ease of use of the product and all that. Uh, but shipping damage happens. Um, what the customer needs to do, what you need to let them know to do is to not accept um, the package if it's obviously like destroyed. If it's a completely destroyed package, you can look into it and see that like components are like scratched or dented or whatever. Um, just don't accept it. Just refuse the shipment because then the shipper, which is usually the supplier, unless it's you, um, but some whoever shipped it paid to have it shipped can file a dispute with the shipping company. And that's the main thing is that if you can file a dispute with the shipping company still, you might be able to get your shipping costs back. Um, it's a long and arduous process, so it's a pain in the butt. You don't want to have to do it, but obviously that's the only way because once the customer signs the, the piece of paper, <clears throat> They accept responsibility for it, and they basically said that it's okay. And there's no more dispute to be filed. You can't file a dispute anymore. So um, it's it is what it is. You need to have something on your website or in the emails that go sent out. You know, when an order gets fulfilled, that the customer needs to um, not sign the piece of paper if the dam if the carton is like obviously damaged. Now there's certain things where like the carton's like a little bit damaged, so you're not really sure and you can't really look in. Um, they should put a note you know, when they sign for it. Well, what they're really supposed to do is open and inspect the package, but that's not always possible. Sometimes it is, and they should do that, um, but sometimes it's not. And they really, when they sign it, they're signing off responsibility for it. So the customer needs to know that, they need to be aware. And if they're not, then it just is what it is. You can let them know after the fact, like, hey, like you signed for it, so you're responsible to ship it back if it's completely damaged. Otherwise, you have to go through the warranty process, just like a normal warranty issue where you get a replacement part and you fix it yourself. 
So that's just the way it is. Um, you know, I have all sorts of crazy things that happen and crazy customers sometimes, crazy experiences. Um, it is a little bit stressful sometimes, but the best thing you can do is hire a VA, a virtual assistant from the Philippines, someone who speaks English, who's good at handling you know, issues and dealing with people that are upset, um, who can calm them down and stuff like that and keep them calm. And, and you know, when somebody's freaking out, the best thing to do is just try your best to keep them emotionally like calm, like try not to say things that are gonna freak them out. Um, the one thing that they're really scared of is losing their money or getting scammed right? And get it, not getting their money's worth. So that you, you, know, you can say things like, we're going to refund you 100%, no problem, as long as everything works out with our policy. According to our policies, um, you're going to get taken care of. Um, you know, you can have a money back guarantee on your website, that kind of stuff, whether you actually do it or not. But you have to be careful, of course, with promising things, because then they can come back and say, hey, you promised this and whatnot. So you got to say it's based on the policy. And according to the policies, you'll get, you know, everything taken care of. So, um, you know, going back and forth between customers and suppliers can kind of be a hassle, but it's just part of doing business, um, retail and selling things, e-commerce and stuff like that. If, if you created and sold your own product, you'd have to deal with it and you'd have to, you know, bring the product back to your own warehouse or fulfillment center and pay for that too. People that do like Amazon FBA and stuff like that, Amazon does that for you, thankfully, but you still have to do your own customer service. So you're going to have to deal with a lot of that stuff. You're going to have stock that's left over that you're going to have to, you know, figure out what to do with, maybe just throw it away or you want to sell it like on eBay or something, like an auction platform, um, whatever. So, yep, that's pretty much the gist of it, guys. I hope this episode was helpful. Um, if you're doing high-ticket dropshipping and you want help with it, definitely check out my free guides at ecommerceparadise.com and check out our services. Um, I offer an e-commerce elite service where you get access to my entire team every single month to help you with scaling your business and managing your business uh, for Google ad management, SEO services, and for beginners, I have a free niches list at ecommerceparadise.com slash niches, and it comes with a free mini course. And then I have the high-ticket dropshipping masterclass. So go check that out, guys, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Take care.